Welcome back anime lover. One Piece chapter 1093 is out, and it features a cover page where some Tarsier's brothers are stealing Kobe and Helmeppo's glasses. If you don't know about Tracier, they are small and big-eyed monkey. So, friend before we start with the chapter it's a humble request guys. Please appreciate my effort by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Help me to reach 1000 plus by end of this year. Let's begin with the chapter. As we saw in chapter 1092 Luffy in gear 5 giant form and grabs Kizaru tightly with his giant fist. Luffy began to twirl Kizaru around. However, Kizaru didn't react and stayed very calm. He told Luffy to be gentle. After spinning Kizaru around, he throws him a long distance, like a baseball. After seeing this, Yuzop and others in the control room wonder just how far he could have gone. People in the control room started discussing that now Luffy is here, he will take care of Kizaru and this is our chance to get out of here. Chopper sees Atlas leaving and asks, Atlas, where are you going? Atlas replies that she is going to the lower stratum to change the commands of the pacifistas. Atlas also says that if they don't control the pacifistas, they will be in big problems. Even if they disable the barrier, the pacifistas can still attack them with their lasers. Atlas adds that on the whole island, no one has more authority over the pacifistas than Vegapunk and those who have pacifistas on their side will have an advantage. So, it's important to have a pacifistas on our side. After saying all this, Atlas starts to leave. That's when Vegapunk says, Stop, Atlas, I will also come with you. Upon hearing Vegapunk, Usopp and others shouts at him, that your life is in danger, and we are taking such a risk to keep you alive, and do you think we will just let you go like that? Vegapunk doesn't listen to anyone and directly calls Frankie, informing him that Bonnie is in the lower stratum. After hearing this, Frankie got relief and tells Vegapunk that Kizaru had kicked Bonnie strongly, causing her to fly and collide with the barrier. After hearing this, Vegapunk gets angry with Frankie and says, Bonnie was with you, so how did you let this happen to her? In response, Frankie apologizes to Vegapunk and says, I'm going right now to save her. However, Frankie then remembers that the barrier is still on, which means he can't go outside the dome. Sanji, who is also listening to Vegapunk and Frankie's conversation. And one fact we know that if a girl is in trouble, you can bet Sanji won't sit back. So, he's decided to join them too. Here, Jaibai is also with Sanji and informs Vegapunk that he has delivered all the cargo behind Egghead Island. And he's heading back to exit. And let's all meet there. After this, the scene shifts to Fabrio phase, where there's a marine who stops all the other marines from going to the center of the city and advises everyone to stay alert. The reason is that Bonnie is also inside the Fabrio phase, and she is fighting against marines, and she has used her devil fruit power to change the age of the marines. Here, Bonnie hides to escape from the marines because she can't face so many marines at once. And here, we learn that when Bonnie was falling down, Sentamaru saved her. Because of this, Bonnie didn't get seriously injured. Sentamaru tells Bonnie to leave the place because more marines are coming. After saying this, Sentamaru loses consciousness. Here, Sentamaru gets caught by the marines, and Bonnie watches all of this in secret, because Bonnie doesn't understand what to do, and in the end, she decides to stay hidden until all of this is over. From here, the scene shifts to Luffy, who is flying in the air, and he asks Zoro if he needs any help fighting Luchi. So, Zoro tells Luffy that he should focus on Kizaru, and he will handle his own fight. Here, Zoro is giving Luchi a tough fight, which forces Luchi to use his awakened form against him. As always, Zoro, being a total badass, mocks Luchi and says, Hey, I won't let someone with your power level fight my captain. Listening to Zoro, Luchi says, Maybe you're right, but defeating the second in command of the emperor is no small feat. A while ago, this same person was denying Luffy as an emperor and now he is saying such things. <laughs> After this, the scene shifts towards Kizaru, whom Luffy had thrown so far that he was about to fall into the sea outside Egghead Island. But just then, Kizaru turns and, while flying back, launches his lighting beam attack, directed towards Luffy. Luffy watches from a distance, and when the lighting beam approaches Luffy, it suddenly converts into multiple holograms, which startles Luffy, making him scream. One of the lightning holograms that forms a light sword and attacks Luffy, hitting him on the cheek making him bleed. Afterwards, Luffy uses his feet and attacks using the Gamu Gamu no Booming Dawn Whip, kicking and striking all the holograms with his feet, causing some of Kizaru's holograms to be destroyed. After destroying Luffy's hologram, some holograms still remain, forcing Luffy to run from them. But here Luffy is not running away from them but rather planning something. All the holograms appear to Luffy as holo holo things. Then Luffy employs a tactic to align all the holograms in a single line, in which they all get trapped. After that, all the holograms are in a single line, and Luffy uses his kick attack, Booing Dawn Stamp, which got rid of all the holograms in single blow. 
after Luffy smashed all the fake holograms. He wondered if he had gotten rid of the real Kizaru as well. Luffy thought so because he thought that the real Kizaru could be one among the holograms. While Luffy was thinking all of this, there was an explosion in the control room. Upon hearing the sound of the explosion, Luffy looks towards the control room, and he is shocked to see it. He realized that Kizaru was in the control room, holding Yuzop by the neck. Kizaru wonders upon seeing that Vegapunk is not in the control room, and he asks Yuzop where could he be. We then see in the next scene that Vegapunk is with his new invention called Vegapunk Tankade. Inside it, Vegapunk and Atlas are seated, and they are heading towards the lower stratum of the island. At the same time, we also see Sanji, who is on Vegapunk Tank 8 and wants to go with Vegapunk to save Bonnie. Vegapunk's expression is quite serious, and he's saying that he won't let Bonnie die, and under his watch, such a thing won't happen at all. Luffy, upon seeing Vegapunk, panics and tells Vegapunk, Old man, don't go outside, or you'll get yourself killed. Kizaru also watches all of this and asks Vegapunk, Vegapunk, where do you think you're going? After this, Kizaru is about to attack Vegapunk Tank 8. But that's when Luffy appears between Kizaru's attack and Vegapunk Tank 8, taking Kizaru's attack upon himself. This attack is so powerful that it troubles Luffy. After that, we also see Frankie, who wants to go with them to the lower stratum. While leaving, Frankie instructs Lilith to use Frankie Shogun to help get Sunny to the back of the island, to which Lilith agrees. Then, the scene changes, and we are shown Egghead Island's port, where Marines are reporting that Vegapunk has arrived in the lower stratum of the island. After this, we see Edison, who says that the Frontier Dome is partially disabled, and he's locking it again. Along with this, we witness Atlas shouting, Attention pacifistas, your orders have been changed. You will receive new orders directly from Vegapunk. Finally, at the end of this chapter, we see Saturn, who looks very serious. So finally, Saturn has made his move and it's a right time because Vegapunk is now in Lower Starum and it's a right opportunity to kill him and get back the control of Mark III pacifistas as Gorosai has the highest authority on them. So, friend this is the end of this video. No chapter next week. See you guys in next video.